the to uh, Mohawk. Mm-hmm. That was another area where black people lived in Mohawk. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Now, I've mm-hmm. heard stories from some people. What else did your great grandmother say? If you want to share, I don't want to force you to say anything you don't want no, to. No, my grandmother said it was the race route, and they were running and they were shooting them. They were shooting mm-hmm. and they were on top of the buildings with machine guns or what That's she said, right. machine guns. And she said they had to run for their life. And they was running. She said she had a baby and she was running. They was running to Mohawk. Wow. I knew a lot of people went to Muskogee on foot, which is about 45-minute drive, maybe an hour if you're driving yeah. a little bit slower. That's a long way yeah. to walk. And yeah, they, they, they were ran. refugees. And where the where the north side is now, where all the black people live, didn't black people used to, didn't live there, did squat. That's true. That's true. Yeah. In Reservoir Hill. Hill. Reservoir Hill, Hill had some blacks because it was doctors that live up there. Mm-hmm. They might have came late. They wasn't up there in the. I know, I remember we used to go up there in the 60s, the 60s and the, the 70s. Mm-hmm. They had some beautiful went, homes I, up there. Yeah. I went to Emerson Elementary. In the 50s, before it was segregation. Emerson, I, I don't quite remember. Yeah, Emerson. Do you remember where that is? I don't quite remember Hello? where Emerson is. Can you hear me? It's on, it's on King and uh, Cincinnati. It's on King and Cincinnati. Okay. So I'm on the east side yeah. of town. So. Okay. I know her. That's my home. So I know. <laughs> I know just about where everything is. Yeah. Black I'll people couldn't come. Have... Go ahead. It's a street called Mohawk. You mm-hmm. you will see it if you Peoria across Peoria. It's called Mohawk. That it was Mohawk and uh, Peoria was far as we could go. Go back to my studio. And on Peoria, they had a, a little area on Peoria and Apache, like people live, and uh, they had stores on the corners and the movie theater on the corner of Peoria and Apache. What was the name? What was the name of that movie theater? Because there's some films of that movie theater of people going to it. And that I'm yeah, watching. I, I I can't think of I have to ask my sister, but she's not here. But I can't think of the name. But it was on the corner of Peoria and Apache. Right. And Gib, uh, Gibbons Grocery Store was across the yeah. street from Gibbons. And uh, we used to go shopping there. And it was black owned. And then mm-hmm. across the street from there. And then we, then we had a drugstore. It was, oh, uh, God, I can't think of it now. I'm going to think of all these names of this stuff, and when I call you again, <laughs> I'll call down Pat to tell you everything. But I know Gibbons was on the corner across from the movie theater, Gibbons Grocery Store. Everything, you know, we had was like from Peoria, Peoria and Mohawk, back to Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. Mm-hmm. It was right there. They had Duke of Earls. It was on Greenwood. And um, they had TVs, grocery stores. We had grocery stores. We had places to shop. I could see all of this stuff, but I can't say the names of them. Just right. got in my head. But it was like the Black Wall Street they were talking about because my doctor right. was Dr. Perry. was right on Greenwood, close to Archer. And now, that's there, where all the, now hmm. downtown, there is a freeze on one of the sides of the buildings honoring that Dr. Perry. He was kind of like a country doctor. He helped a lot of people, a lot of nuns, yeah, too, Yeah, he helped I a understand. lot of people. If when they didn't have money, he'd still let you come. Yeah. 
good and people. He had another doctor. He was on uh, Pine. His name was Dr. Bates. Dr. Bates Ironic. was on. Yeah. And then it was another <laughs> doctor. Because we used to go to him. That's how I remember. I'm trying. Then we had a, a clinic uh, like the health department. It was on uh, Greenwood. It was right over there off of Greenwood. And then it was right off of Greenwood over there. It was King's Park. It was the Rex Theater. It was a Rex Theater on Greenwood. We used to go all the time. What movies do you remember watching there? I I watched uh, Imitation of Life. I watched, uh, and James Brown used to come on there. And um, I know I watched Imitation of Life, and I watched, Mm -hmm. it was, it was like movies were only white people. And I was even on American Bandstand downtown, but we couldn't come like the white people. They were there every week. Every now and then they were let, like, get on the American Bandstand. Or you know how you dance on TV? Right. Yeah, and when we came that time, Jerry Butler was there. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Who but was Jerry Rick Butler? Show. Was he a, a host of the show? No. He was a he was an artist, uh, an R and B artist. Oh, okay. Well, I learned something new. Yeah, he was an R and B artist, and uh, we saw James uh, Brown on, on uh, the movie theater. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of that boy's name because a lot of they movies play with with um, the Mickey Mouse. The uh, the ones who was Mickey Mouse, they they used to be the club. On Mickey Mouse and they, yeah, and that and uh uh and that was on, yeah and uh that guy who 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 he was on in there too with her he used to make movies. We've seen a lot of they movies. Mhm. We didn't see no, no black movies. Only black movie I can remember was Imitation a lot. Well, that's good. That's that's good. Imitation. Life. I haven't seen that one. I, I'm going to look that up and watch it. The... It's good. It's not all black, but it's some black. Uh, and it was like mess. Wilson. That's good. Yeah, it was Wilson's Cafe across from the movie theater, and the pool hall was there, and the cab stand for the black cab. Mhm. And. On Apache, okay, I, if I could think, I just can't name all the names or everything, but I remember real good. And I remember Wilson's Cafe and Olanson's and uh, it's Cleveland. That was a black, all these was black uh, restaurants, or little cafes, you know, where people come and eat. Mm-hmm. They have a few left. They, Not very many. Well, now. None of them that was there when we was there. That, that's all new. What you see down there. Mhm. Oh, all that's new. That was none of that was there. When There's Black one Wall family. Street. One family. They moved their their little cafe to Broken Arrow, and that's some of the best catfish. The best. It's a good place. Mm-hmm. Get it my was memory. A family he used to, to, yeah, that fish place they moved, but I that place it it wasn't there when when it was when it was uh, mm-hmm. like Wall Street. I hear you. Because I was born, I was born in '52. Because I don't think people understand how big of an area and how it looked like a a war torn city that had been demolished. Now, um, the reason why I know about those trucks is because of Nancy Busey. Her maiden name was mm-hmm. West, and she had worked for Wait Phillips at Philbrook. She was a baby nurse. She mm-hmm. took care of the grandbabies, basically. And um, she would tell me things like that, and um, she would tell me about the Klan. You know, the the oil companies were very involved with the Klan, and a lot of people yeah. don't know that. And she talked about the planes that they were Phillips Petroleum planes, which they had a large aviation field. As a matter of fact, they designed one of the first spacesuits for space 
they did a lot of uh, technology. So it's not without outside the realm of reason that they did this. And plus, Nancy told me they had, that they had bombed mm-hmm. Tulsa. I don't think people understand how bad it truly was. And not much no. has truly changed. You know, my my youngest, she was protesting and she was talking about that there was African Americans dead in the street, male and female. And today there are still African Americans dead in the street. And it's because of our yeah. sheriff's department. You know, that sheriff's department, in my opinion, is deadly. You know, I'm trying to be yeah. very careful how I say things because things are going so well. I don't want them to think that we're we're hating on the police, but I hate the violence. I hate the injustice, and things have to change. We have to have a new sheriff's department from the top down. When the corruption stops at, or starts at the top, it trickles down, and, and it's just insane. Did you know there's Huckabee followers in the, the sheriff's department? They call them Huckabees. Have you heard of that? I didn't know. No, I, I've never heard of it. No, I have not confirmed this, but this is my understanding that um, Mr. Huckabee has a large sexual appetite and that people in the sheriff's department, in order to get ahead, have swapped favors. We call these people Huckabees. Gay. Uh-huh. They say Absolutely. Gay. Mm, God help America. Now, I don't know if he's gay or not, but, you know, I do highly believe in the Huckabee story. That It couldn't have been around that long without a good reason. And I think if it were not true, he would have put a stop to that rumor if it was a rumor. Have you all posted his picture and we the people? Pardon? Have you posted his picture? They have a picture in the private group, and it's also in the media. You know, especially of his tattoo, I think it's on his left arm, isn't it? His left arm, that it's very similar, Uh, if not exactly, like some of the neo-Nazi tattoos. A national socialist. uh, I do not know the reason why he got that particular tattoo, but it's exactly like the other ones that they, they use in that group. Mm-hmm. So it's just surprising all this darkness that I that, that I hear about. And, you know, you, I, I'm a white you? person. I'm a white person, and so I don't see this other side. You know, I don't get where, followed how, in the stores. Go ahead. How, where are you from? Where are you from? Well, I was raised in Bartisville, and I've been uh-huh. living in Tulsa since the early '90s. So I've been in Oklahoma pretty much all of my life, except for where I was born. But... How Oklahoma do? Mm-hmm. Because I try to explain it to other people. I said, you don't understand. This population, the African-American population, was decimated in 1921, and that had has had an effect for generations. And those people yeah. that murdered all, you know, that did all that murder – their descendants are still here. This yeah. elitist mentality that our life, meaning a white life, is of more value than an African American or Native American or or any other minority. That the only life that really truly matters, it seems like within the especially sheriff's department, I, it's just so troubling. And this is, uh, like I've explained, uh, I've gone to J.C. Penney's, and there's white sales clerks, and there's African-American sales clerks, and the white clerk's not going to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, or anything like that. But these two young, beautiful ladies, you know, they they were helping me, and it was yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, what can I do for you, ma'am? You know, it's almost like going back to the 60s or 70s, you know, and I think. I don't know if they're taught to do this. I mean, because I'm not in that world. You know, I, you know, why can't they just be a person like everybody else? You know, why is it that our society seems to influence our young people like this so much? 
you know, it's almost 